Welcome to an uh, intro in how to create uh, dynamic templates in Brandworks. Um, as you can see here, I'm in uh, InDesign, so you need to have some InDesign knowledge uh, or a person with InDesign knowledge if you don't get us to create the templates for you. Um, this is a very simple um, artwork uh, for demonstration purposes. This is uh, our demo, demo company, Frutini. Um, so I've got a poster here with a couple of pictures, a heading, a message, and at the bottom, if I quickly magnify here, you'll see that there's some contact details. Um, <clears throat> for each uh, item that you want uh, to be editable by the end user, you need something called a tag. So I've got the tag palette here to the right, and I'm going to create a couple of tags, uh, or tags for each frame. So Let's have one called image top, another one called image bottom, we need the uh, heading, message, uh, phone number, web address, and I also need one that I'm going to call the uh, contact details, uh, which I'll come back to later. Uh, so now that I've got my tags, uh, I can essentially drop them onto the relevant boxes, uh, or I can select a, an, a box and click the tag to tag it. So I'm going to tag the top image, then I'm going to uh, tag the bottom image by dragging this one on there. Uh, I'm going to tag the heading. As you can see, they changed color slightly uh, to indicate uh, that they're tagged, and they change color to the same color as what uh, the tag color is, which is a randomly assigned color. Uh, message, uh, and then down here we need the we got the phone number and the web address, uh, but. We want this to be uh, inside the rest of the text, uh, so we don't want to just, and we don't want anybody to mess around with the uh, other text. So uh, we're going to use something called inline tagging. Um, so I'm just going to select the phone number or the notes representing the phone number, tag that there, and uh, I'm also going to tag the web address. Um, and as you can see, the actual box itself also got tagged. Um, it created a default thing called story. I'm going to actually use my contact details for that instead. Um, uh, essentially, if you use inline tagging, you must uh, also tag the frame. Uh, and you can see that uh, the inline tags are represented by these little square brackets. Uh, finally, I'm just going to show you something called the structure view. Uh, so we're essentially finished with our tagging now. Uh, but in here we got something called structure, and you can see what is actually done behind the scenes. It's created a hierarchy. Uh, this is essentially a visual representation of some XML that's stored inside the InDesign file. Uh, you can see here the telephone web address is uh, contained inside the contacts details box, and everything else is just uh, connected to the root, which is essentially the document. Um, one more thing I need to do uh, because I'm using images, uh, I want to make sure that uh, the images that the end user select are always going to fill the frame. So I'm going to use uh, another feature called object styles, uh, which is a little bit like uh, text styles where you can rep uh, set default font sizes, colors, etc. But for, for graphics objects instead. So I'm going to create a new one of those. And edit it. So I'm going to call this uh, fill frame centered. And uh, we got a feature called frame fitting options. And I'm going to set it to fill frame proportionally. I don't want any squashed or stretched images. And I'm going to click this little center box. Uh, this essentially means that if the aspect ratio of the picture that the person puts in is different to the frame, it's essentially going to keep scaling it up until it completely fills the frame. So I'm going to assign that to both this picture box and also to this picture box. Uh, 
and that's my tagging done. Uh, then I need to upload it, so I'm going to use InDesign's package feature, uh, which essentially just uh, copies out the file, including all of the placed images and um, illustrations. So I'm going to do that onto my desktop, and then I'm going to switch to Brandworks. So this is our trusty demo company, Frutini. Um, uh, this is the template section. It's very simple. It's just a demo. Um, this has just got one page in it, but typically uh, you would have a folder structure with all the categories of templates. Um, because I'm an admin, I'm getting this white button here saying create layout template uh, to create a new template. So I'm going to go ahead and that. And I'm going to create uh, it called A3 Simple Poster. And I don't want crop marks because let's say that we're using internal printers for this so we don't need crop marks that's only if we want to send it off to a printing company so it's created the template container effectively and then I need to upload my files to that so again because I'm an admin I'm getting an edit button here where I can then upload to the template uh, so let me just view the desktop. So here is the files that we exported just before. So I need my InDesign file. I also need my placed assets. And finally, uh, I'm using some custom fonts here. So let me upload those as well. Typically, you would have uh, your corporate fonts installed already, so you don't need to do this. But it's great that you can upload um, ad hoc fonts as as needed if you're doing something a little bit out of the ordinary. So this is uploading and uh, importing. Uh, on import of course we're inspecting the tags and also creating thumbnails automatically. So we'll just give that a little bit of time. Okay, so that's done. Right, so now I've got my InDesign file, I've got the three images, I've got the fonts, it's checked that everything is there. So essentially I could go ahead and use this now. Uh, I'm just going to go do a little bit more configuration on the uh, each field, uh, which I do under Configure Editable Areas. So you get a region for each frame. Uh, uh, we got image top here, so that's an image field. Um, instead of giving people end users free reign of the whole um, system, I'm going to basically limit them to a particular folder. So we got a folder here um, called um, people, where we got some people shots in. Um, I'm also going to use this for high-res purposes, so I'm just basically going to insert, I wanted to insert the high-res original into the InDesign file. Uh, image bottom, that was our food background, so I'm just going to go to a folder I happen to know has got food backgrounds in, um, so I don't want to limit people to that. Again, I want a high-res, let's make that mandatory. Um, Let's make a couple of other things mandatory. So these are the text options you get. Minimum, maximum number of characters, size. You can make it uh, a variety of other reasons. Uh, sorry, um, validation. Uh, you can actually insert some sort of prefixes and a suffix as well, which is very handy for business cards, for instance. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And go back to the front end view. So um, that should be it. I should be ready to imagine that I'm an end user and try the artwork. Um, end users, of course, wouldn't see all of these admin buttons. They would just see the green button here for creating a new artwork. So let's try it. Give it a name. Uh, 
and then on the next screen uh, you'll see that on the left each tag frames are turned into a field in a web form and on the right uh, the uh, preview will load. Um, I guess I didn't make the first image mandatory so I'll just insert one here. Um, I limit it to the people pictures so I'm only getting a choice of of that. Let's choose this alluring woman. And then I want to change the background to blueberries. Okay, and let's uh, dream up some text for this. Um, let's imagine this is for internal use maybe and we want a taster session for a new juice called blueberry heaven. Um, come to the boardroom at 9 p.m. on Thursday. Let's put in a telephone number so people can contact me about it. And maybe there's even a web address about it. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I can also preview this as a PDF. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and create the final PDF. Um, I'm actually uh, logged in as an admin still, of course, so uh, I can also create EPS and InDesign. Uh, normal users would only see PDF uh, or indeed see save and a request approval um, if it's part of the workflow. Um, the reason for having InDesign for admins is that um, sometimes uh, you just need, uh, or the end user need a little bit of a manual tweak, um, and then the admin can do that. So yeah, that's created now. So let's open that as a PDF. So here's my high-res, ready to print. PDF. Uh, we're using a format called PDF X4, uh, which is uh, pretty much usable by any printing company in the world. It's an uh, industry standard. Uh, and I'm uh, done. Thanks very much for watching.